capacitor, so I thought I'll do a live demonstration of what's actually happening in the capacitor and what's happening with regards to voltage and energy and every other value possible. So I've set up a login screen here into the uh, inverter, which is showing me the charge and uh, discharge rates, the voltages, the power used, etc. I can do a lot of things here and turn off energy used, but I want to see it and generated power, etc. Power used, I don't need to see. You can see here from left to right, I'm seeing a state of charge at 100% and then it's falling down to, it says here, 48%, 43%. But that's just a limit of the inverter's uh, reportability. That's actually empty at, at 43%. So you can see the voltage is at 46 volts DC. And at the top, it's at uh, almost 54 volts DC. Okay. And the yellow line is state of charge changing. So at the moment, we're charging and discharging from 1.05 a.m. this morning until empty at 1.50. So it's 45 minutes. And then we're filling it again by 2.35 and then emptying it again by uh, 3.10 in the morning and then so on. So about every 45 or 50 minutes we're filling it and emptying it again. Move across to the next graph over here and you'll see the same state of charge happening along the way but we're also measuring energy. So we've got battery energy in, battery energy out and uh, internal battery conductor temperature. That's just the temperature of the battery itself or the supercapacitor battery and uh, so on. So we're basically looking at round-trip efficiency in this graph. We found that over a period of about a week we lose around about 2% in each direction from a charge and a discharge when we're running at a at full nameplate rating of around about 100 amps each way and that's less if we run it at a lower rate uh, and all of the energy we're losing is coming out as heat. This image here where the mouse is hovering over now is a thermal image from a Testo 885-1 uh, thermal imaging camera and we are now looking at the uh, insides of the supercapacitor module. It's around 600 millimetres wide, 530 millimetres deep and 200 millimetres tall. And this temperature sensor is actually focused on the actual conductor, the main conductor coming from the positive terminal into the supercapacitor bank. It's a direct connection between the supercapacitors and the back terminal. And the camera is set to pick up temperatures between 29 degrees and 51 degrees for the sake of simplicity. We might have to change that in a moment to actually get a, a larger range. Um, so maybe we need to go up to a higher range. We'll see how we go. So over here, we've got a log into the inverter, which is showing at the moment we've got a AC source, which is the grid. In Australia, that is around 240 to 250 volts AC. And uh, we are taking that energy and we are transferring it to an AC load. And at the moment, we are charging this, with this AC source into the supercapacitor and that's happening as what we call an initial or bulk charge. So normal, normally a chemical battery goes through an initial bulk charge, absorption charge, an equalization charge or float charge. Uh, lithium batteries are a little bit different but they all have a certain charging regime. Being a supercapacitor we don't have to actually charge in a certain way. We just give it full bulk charge all the way until it's full. At the moment we're charging here at 53.2 amps and uh, the battery state of charge says it's 62%, but that's not quite accurate because the inverter can't report below uh, a one hour rating. The battery voltage is 49.6 and we're charging, so you should see that start to climb here as we go along because we're in charge mode and we're not exporting here. And um, the AC load power is 0.28 kilowatts, which is to do with inverted energy usage uh, and export power is negative because we're drawing power in. So the next window over here, I've, I've done it in kilowatts rather than amps just so you can see the uh, kilowatt rate of this unit charging. So it's a 3.55 kilowatt hour unit and we are charging currently at 2.65 kilowatts which is around about, uh, I guess, C1.3 or 1.3C which is charging it over just over an hour to full. Um, down the bottom here, you can see uh, this is the settings window of the inverter where we can actually instruct it what rate to charge it and discharge it. And on the right over here, we can do other kinds of things with um, history and other, other kinds of magic. Connect okay, so, Yos, could you please change it so we run to full charge rate that the inverter can actually give it? I know that we're limited to about 7.2 kilowatts. 
which is about a 30 minute charge or maybe even a 25 minute charge from this particular inverter. After Yasa makes the change, you'll see this battery current jump up to a pretty high level. And then you'll see the uh, battery power jump up to a high level over here. And you should start to see the temperature of this conductor climb as well because it's um, going to get hotter as the more energy flows through it. And up the top here, these graphs are showing the rate of charge. The angle of these yellow lines will increase to a sharper pitch. And I'll have to just keep refreshing that screen to um, make sure you can see that happen. You can also see the battery voltage here is relatively linear with the charge rate. So you can almost tell the state of charge of the supercapacitor battery by looking at the battery voltage because it's almost the same line. That's often difficult with a lithium ion battery or, or another chemical battery like a lead battery. Over on the right over here, while those changes are happening, um, you can see the battery temperature and the um, other, other values. You can see the grid voltage changes over time as well as we export and import. So let's go back down to the here again. We've got 74 amp charge right now. So here we have a charging source AC and it's initial bulk. So it's now putting 74 amps into the supercapacitor battery. And that means that it's running at 3.7 kilowatts charge rate. Now it's a 3.55 kilowatt hour total available energy supercapacitor, which means it's charging faster than one hour. And um, it's filling up beautifully using initial bulk charge and the battery voltage is now 50.3. You can see here the temperature of the supercapacitor hasn't really changed at all. The conductor may have got a little bit warmer, but it's almost not noticeable. Um, if we go down to the, the values on the right over here, you've got here energy used, etc. And we're going to look down here at the um, flow of energy rate, which is at the moment we are at 4,173 watts negative. So it's actually an import, which is why it's charging. And Yossi, if I could just get you to turn it around now and get it to export back to the grid again, rather than charge. Now very in a moment, you'll see the uh, battery current here reverse because we're going to be exporting our supercapacitor battery energy into the inverter where it converts to AC. And we are now running at maximum export power. So it's 190 amps. Um, and the battery voltage fell, obviously, because it's starting to load the supercapacitor down. And we are now exporting the little green light over here. We're exporting back to the grid. So we're exporting at 9.16 kilowatts. Now this is a 3.55 kilowatt hour supercapacitor exporting at 9.15 kilowatts, which is almost um, a 20 minute discharge into the grid. The temperature of the supercapacitor still hasn't changed. The conductor might get a little bit warmer here but it's almost not noticeable. So the thermal image tells all because um, the round trip efficiency of about 2% loss each way is indicative of how much energy is being lost while it charges and discharges. I'm just gonna jump up and move the temperature sensor of the thermal camera so that it's over, over the top of the um, conductor to see if it's getting hotter. Uh, yes, we are getting a bit hotter there. You can see that there. 40 degrees. You might even get a hot spot in a corner where you get a bit more of a high temperature point. You can see it jumping around there a bit. It's hard to land it on the cable. Yeah, I'll find it here where it's glowing the reddest. Okay, so we're now right on the conductor. You can see now the, the conductor's getting hotter as we flow energy out of the supercapacitor into the AC inverter. And it's climbing gently. So the, capacitor, it's the capacitors themselves within the, this cube here are not getting hotter, it's just the cable. Now that's quite good because that means we've got peaking power of 9.11 kilowatt hours, or here 9.1 kilowatt hours, kilowatts, and it's having almost no effect on the actual unit itself. When you're discharging a chemical battery, you'll find that the chemical battery does not like to discharge at this kind of rate. We have tested it up to a discharge rate of 23 kilowatts. That's two and a half times higher. So that's a discharge rate of about six minutes to empty. And um, because it's just peaking, the cable doesn't have enough time to get hot. So you can see on the right over here, you've got DC battery current, 56 amps here. And then we drop down to uh, 76, 68 amps negative and so on. So this is a cycling test.
and here you can see we're really running it hard. So it jumped from 73 amps positive to 193 amps negative. It's not struggling really. The battery conducted temperature is now up to 49 degrees. Um, so really the only energy problem here is the size of this conductor and the temperature reading of the insulating conductor. It's quite unique in a battery. So we're not being penalised for this high discharge rate except through a bit of loss of heat. Normally a battery would get very, very hot if you tried to discharge it over a short period. We'll just expand out here to a, a week of time to see what's happening over a large, larger period. You can see here we've been running this unit, um, I think 14 charge cycles per day for a few months now. And you can see here as I drag the mouse along that we're going up and down, up and down, discharging, recharging, discharging, recharging at around about a 45 minute interval and there's no loss of performance. So the supercapacitor doesn't lose power over that period. So the supercapacitor is designed to do around a million charge cycles. It's probably not really realistic to get a million charge cycles in around 20 years or so, but the, the benefit is that you don't have to worry about loss of performance of the supercapacitor over time, um, which you do have to with a chemical battery. The fact that you can charge it at any rate, discharge it at any rate, and um, Oh, we're just done a turnaround here. So the software here was set to turn around the charge once it got down to the lowest voltage to actually just to recharge again. That's how we programmed it. Let's refresh this graph up here. So that's it. So that's a supercapacitor in action. You've got here live recording, thermal camera filming the conductor getting hotter as we charge. You might see this fall away a little bit now because we're now starting to discharge. Uh, so we're char charging from the grid at 74 amps. This login software is SP Link, which is uh, a program native to the SP Pro inverter made in Melbourne, Australia. And it's a great inverter for letting us do these really high energy tests. So thanks very much for the time to listen to the presentation on supercapacitors. Uh, if you'd like to hear more about them, then uh, come and visit us at our website or send us an email. Thanks very much. This is Paul signing out.